Hello, welcome back. Week two of All Gathered Up, the show that runs parallel with the Great British Sewing Bee. Uh, it kind of goes into all the skills or maybe some techniques mm. that came up each episode. Um, and we do that because we've got more time. We know the Great British Sewing Bee, it's, it's a quick old thing, <laughs> certainly mm. in the early weeks for an hour to get all those uh, sewers in, to, uh, 12 or on 11 sewers now. But as always, you know we can go into that detail because we have the expert Carol Elaine, Master Taylor Couturier with us. Good Evening, Carol. How are you? Hello, Stuart. I'm. I'm. It's raining here, but it's <sighs> sunny where you are. Because look what you're wearing. <laughs> Indeed, I thought we need some sunshine in our life today because it's miserable here in Suffolk too. Grotty, gloomy day, rainy now as I look out of the window. And I thought, right, we need to brighten it up. And you saw it on the mannequin last week. So I thought I would try and show it to you with my, my little gym top underneath. I just need, I just now need a garden party to go to, Carol. Have we got, have we got anything oh, we lined up over that. the summer that we can uh, go to? Let's sort that out. Let's go to the <laughs> palace. I think we can, I think I have an in. Wonderful. <laughs> so we had Sports Week. But before we go into Sports Week, Carol, did you see all the comments on last week's video? Ah, oh, wow. How refreshing. It, People really interested in the technical side. Really good questions, some helpful points, yeah. uh, particularly about how to thread, you know, a larger top stitching needle. Yeah. Um, use the groove. Yes, that was a really good point. So, now you know we're, we're we're helping people, but our our um, you know the the base is helping each other as well. So Indeed, that's, it's a lovely dialogue. It's 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 the love for your expertise though, and the appreciation of it. So I've got a few little messages here. It's just nice to go over what was said. Uh, at each week so I thought I'd show you some so just some uh, a few comments um, Anna says I love all the detailed discussions thank you for doing this thank you Anna for watching um, it's wonderful uh, so that was one and then we had uh, Nikki she goes thank you both for your informative take on the Great British Sewing Bee I think this kind of content is sadly missing from the main show I was interested to hear Carol's thoughts on the pattern challenge it's such a shame there aren't some carols working on the show. <laughs> Look at that. That's lovely. Oh, well, thank you. And um, uh, we've got, let's have a look at another one. We've got a couple more. Uh, that's uh, from Marie, this one. Wonderful. Thoroughly enjoyed listening to Carol and her expertise. And for Stuart for adding to the charm. <laughs> uh, and then, and for mainly, uh, and mainly for allowing Carol to speak uninterrupted. Good. I hope I don't interrupt too much, do I? I don't. Not at all, much. Stuart. Not at all. And then, lastly, so thank you for that, for Marie. Um, and then Denise, she goes round of applause. Time for my favourite YouTube vlog ever. Oh. Wow! <laughs> Isn't that lovely, Carol? Good. Good point. I, I I'm glad it's working, Stuart, because we. How long has it been now? I wrote to you four years ago and yeah. said, I don't like this. You know, I don't like the, the non, the, well, the absence of technical language yeah. and, you know, and, it, it, and, need to, and, we need to inspire people and to show them actually, um, you're not making a mess of things. You know, you're not doing wibbly wobblies. Here's what yeah. happens. And here's how we can help you get to be a better sewer. And, and it, I think it is working. Oh, absolutely. When you see all those comments and all the views and and there is a there is a demand for it. And that's why YouTube works, because you can find the content and boy, is there a lot of content out there. And yes, uh, the content may not be to everyone's taste, but you can find the content for your taste. So there are different types of sewing shows like what we do. Um, and it all comes down to the hosts and how they put them together. And I know a lot of people appreciate uh, the technical side of it and also the the, uh, the pictures that we're able to do now. And we're a bit techy here, so we can, we can link up and we're trying to strive with that but that's that's the beauty of YouTube and I, I, I always makes me remember back to 
I know I've talked about this many times before, when I was younger and I was quite envious of my dad and my brother who who loved football and sport. I used to like sport, but they loved football and watching it. They would watch, they would, <coughs> excuse me, they would watch live football and then be chatting during the match. But then they would have that wonderful after show, wouldn't they? Where they would have the pundits oh, yeah. and they would yep. then debate it and they would analyse it. They would then show show bits back with slow motion and focus in on it. And my dad and my brother would have this amazing conversation. And my brother was probably only 17, 16, but the debate between him and dad about who played well, why did they play well? Why did they lose? What could they have done differently? I was really envious of that because there was nothing Aww. like that in our in our craft world, was there? Yeah. So this show yeah. is that we get to to mm-hmm. geek out in a way, talk more in detail about the craft we love. And mm-hmm. look, everyone is enjoying that extra hour of chat about the craft that we love. Because we don't yeah. often get the chance to do it, do we? No, you don't. And the show is soon over. It's like yeah. a football match, you know, or a baseball game. I know, I know what you're talking about exactly. It's a big topic, and, and we love it for so many different reasons, and it enriches for so many different reasons. And you, you, you know, the show is an hour, and then you, you, you know, the, then the program's yeah. over. You want more. You want to know more. And um, <laughs> I mean, a great lesson during COVID when they sold out sewing machines because people suddenly had yeah. time, and what did they want to do with their time? They wanted to get better at this. Yeah. And I always remember you also saying, being a sewer and a tailor and a couturier like yourself, it's actually quite a lonely job as well. You are on your own a lot of the time, aren't you? So to come together like we are now, talking about our skill and sharing tips, sharing skills, sharing techniques. I do it like this. Oh, do you? I do it like this. Oh, well, oh, that might be a new way. It's wonderful as well, isn't it? Coming together. It is. And you're right. It's a solitary business. And and so it is nice to have some dialogue, you know, about it. I'm enjoying it immensely. And, oh. and I love the way that you put things together and how you've beefed up the technology. And I, all I have to do is say, can we talk about this? And you yeah. get everything sorted out, Stuart. Oh. So... You know, all I do, I just sit here and talk. <laughs> well, you've got the hardest bit because you you need to do all the talking now. Also, you do all the making too. And I know a couple of comments said, oh, we'd love to see what you do and what you're currently working on. And I have put some pictures in. So everyone get ready to see these makes from Carol. Let's go to this one first. <laughs> Tell us about this one. Okay, so this is a Dior-inspired uh, two-piece ensemble. It's it's made of silk, shot silk, black, and midnight navy. So it's very dark fabric, and it's a bubble skirt with a very tall waistband. It's about four and a half inches tall, and it has these you know kind of defined, um, very thick metallic trim going mm. vertically. Um, and then also it has some metallic buttons. They're, they're very bright silver, and I covered the buttons with a black and silver mesh wow. to soften the um, that. And it's a halter, and it secures up the center back with a separating concealed zip. So I'd be interested to know if anyone out there has ever used a, a um, concealed zip that separates because it, you can't see it at all wow. and and they're quite magical um, they're a bit fiddly to install and fiddly to work with but if you wax them if you wax the teeth and the in, uh, the first prong that you insert they they work a treat so that's how the skirt is made it has two layers of netting and a bit of crinoline along the at the bottom of the netting there's a crinoline to hold it open Oh, and then, so, yep. uh, oh, I've got my pen. I've got my pen back so I can ah, draw on okay. it. Right, let's <laughs> see if this works. Um, so to hold that open, so the crinoline's along yeah. there, is it's it? About, it's about three inches above the, uh, the hem on the inside. So if you draw a dotted line, there you go. Yeah. The crinoline is holding. It's like this cage that holds yeah. the uh, netting opened to that circumference that I'm asking it oh. to. And then the whole thing goes into the, the hip line. This is a size 10 
and it's on a size 12 mannequin. So you can see there's a bit of stress yeah. in, the, in the piece because the piece is a little tight for the mannequin. Yeah. Um, but it, it, it's the wow. best size to show it off. And I yes. just wanted to take a quick picture before I handed it over two days ago. Oh, look at that, everyone. That's like current as we could possibly get. And then your second one here. Now, I've done a, a zoom out shot, but um, uh, once we start talking about it, I'll enlarge it as we talk. Tell us about this okay. one. Okay. So this is a tailored piece. And this is a, a double breasted that has covered buttons. And it has button loops. So if you zoom in, you can see the button loops. And the collar, the revere, is buried into the shoulder line. And it's made of a silk um, weave uh, with a very sort of heavy tapestry treatment to it. And I've, it's difficult to see, wow. but I've actually matched the pattern all the way around. So the sleeves um, um, and the, the, the center front, the center back, and um, the side seam of the trouser, everything matches. And I did that out of three meters of cloth. <gasps> uh, in fact, 2.8 meters of cloth. And I was determined to get it out. So it meant that I was going to raise the hem on the sleeve. So it's, yeah. it's, it's kind of just bracelet length. And then I raised the hem on the trouser so I could get everything out of 2.8 meters of fabric. So that's a silk um, oh. kind of a tapestry. Yeah. And I'm look really at that, that idea that. of the, I love the idea of the red underneath and the red shoes. I, I mean, that's just, just that little bit yeah. of pop, I isn't it? I love red and, red and gold uh, together. So it's, it's a shot kind of a gold and a black um, yeah. in, in the fabric. And yeah, the red accent is one of my favorites. I just like those two colors together. And you look at that and just go, I'm really pleased with that. Or are you are you looking at that and going, oh, I'm glad I got to do that one again, or both? <laughs> I think I'd like to make that many more times because I oh. think it's a really lovely uh, pattern, and it's not so you know severe. It doesn't look like a trussed up jacket. No, you know, it's, it's no. very soft, and uh, that's what I love about it. And it, it, it's a lovely feminine piece if you want to show off jewelry or. You yeah. know, your rings, your bracelets, your watches, um, you know, your shoes. Yeah. Now, all the pressure is taken off. So the accessories really shine um, with this kind of a piece. And, and it's easy. Uh, the, you know, the button line is easy. The, you know, the waist button is done up with a loop and the, and the lower button, the hip button is, is open. So it's, you know, it's just, it's relaxed. It is, yes. But it's just got something to it and as that that i like that how it comes up and it's there's no there's no cutting into it you know to make it more look yeah. like a suit with those cuts and things it's just those nice two long panels going up beautiful yes it looks like it has a very wide shawl collar but it, it all disappears into the shoulder line so there's nothing at the back of the neck oh there's a lot of freedom in this suit i'm glad you like it Love it. Absolutely love it. Right. Well, there we are, everyone. So that's what Carol's up to. Thank you for your comments and thank you for coming back. I know many of you, we don't see much of you during the year because actually we don't do much sewing during the year. I know I'm doing my wool shows from the shop, but it's lovely to come back each year and see those same faces back. So thank you very much for your lovely comments. Keep them coming. Uh, we always, always do the post as well after the show that asks for questions. If you've got any questions for Carol, we've got some of those. We'll do them at the end of the show after we've looked at the focus. So as you can see there, Sports Week from what watching uh, uh, this episode, Carol just knew straight away, well, we've got to talk about stretch, haven't we? This idea of the knit stretch fabric and then seeing some of the stretch fabric uh, in the made to measure. Uh, so uh, Carol said straight away stretch. And then uh, as we saw throughout, the understitch came out and the stitch in the ditch in the first part. So there are three topics. So where should we start then? Should we start with the basics? Just a quick chat about what stretch is? Sure. Uh, stretch fabric is, is not warp and weft, you know, like a woven fabric. And it, it's very stretchy. It moves differently. And each stretch fabric is different. Um, you have what's called flat um, manufactured knits. And that has a salvage kind of like a woven fabric, but 
you can't trust the shell the salvage for alignment oh, okay right. so generally with a warp and weft fabric you can just go parallel to the salvage and you you know you've got a straight of grain isn't the same thing with a flat woven um, a, a knit fabric. And then you have something which is more tubular. And that's more part of your world, Stuart, yeah. where you, you have a definite row of, of ribbing. And if you want to establish the grain in a tubular knit fabric, then you have to identify where those ribs are. And then you fold your fabric along that. So you can't trust a um, knit fabric in the same way that you can okay. trust trust a woven fabric and then of course it can be slippery if it's swimwear it can be very bobbly it can be like fleece where the feed dog is not going to you know hop along and bur and bring it through like uh, other fabrics will so different preparations are needed so in this um challenge first of all there was very little time to do it it was a very complicated um, a thing to achieve because you had to insert zip in a window. Mm -hmm. You had to align the zip with a collar in two yeah. places, at the top and at the neck. And at the neck. Um, Should we have a picture of it? Stitch. Let me get, yeah, yeah, let me get a that. picture of it. Yes. So this was in the pattern challenge and mm. it was a half zip fleece. And as you can see there uh, from the haberdashery requirements, uh, a couple of zips, uh, and interfacing, but it was then um, fleece backed sweatshirting fabric. Um, so, like that, that jersey mm. sort of fleece fabric, and that's the pattern. No. That's yeah. how. Oh, you're right. Yeah, she, here I am. I she, just wanted to get a piece of fabric. I just thought of something, actually. Okay, yeah. Um, and hopefully, yeah. did you notice that when Carol walked away, her sound was crystal clear? <laughs> She got posh lapel mic on, Carol. It's brilliant. It you see, we want to keep improving for you all. Um, not as posh all right. as your mic, Stuart. Not, not <laughs> yes, my, my big DJ <laughs> mic here. Uh, okay, right. Let me cut to the big window so we can see you a bit better. There you go. Okay. What have you picked so, up? Well, I, I found this fabric and I it's it's knit, it's jersey. And I just thought, can you see how it's curling at the bottom? Yeah, it's a nightmare. It does okay. it all the time, doesn't it? Yeah. And then I'm just going to... This is the cross grain. This is the straight of grain here. It's curling here too. Yeah. So this is what you've got to cope with. And I noticed that when the contestants were cutting things out, they were having to deal with that, that yeah. curl all over the place. So that, you know, that's, um, that can cr create a real mess yeah. if, you, if you don't give the fabric enough time to relax and almost weight it down as you're cutting it. So that's, just wanted to mention that. Let's have a look at their example. As always, we see the show's actual piece. And I, I thought that was very 80s. I was joking with Ting. Can you remember, Carol, um, a high street shop called CNA? <laughs> I, oh yes. <laughs> I used to go there as a kid and I think I had like a, a jacket or a shell uh, ski jacket just like that yeah. in those colors. Yeah. <laughs> those but, exact colors, yeah. But there we are. Yeah, so we had these colors, yeah. we had these two zips that they wanted parallel and then the patch pocket. The patch pocket was going to be hard enough because I think that was in the the rip stop which we've used before, haven't we? We have. Rip stop doesn't stretch. And then the uh, knit is very lively. So yeah. already that's a very complicated thing to ask them to do. Um, and they asked a few more questions uh, to um, understitch and to, I think they got a bit confused as well because they then said the cover stitch um, and, and a hem. But as you rightly pointed out, when they showed the cover stitch, well, it's still a raw edge there anyway. I thought that was the point of a cover stitch. Was it not to save doing uh, a, a, a cover yeah. up the hem? Is that the whole point you're, of it? Yeah, no, you're absolutely right. This, the cover stitch is supposed to conceal the raw edge. And uh, as you can see, the raw edge is clearly visible. It's shouting out at you. So yeah. that cover stitch is not a success. So, they've basically uh, just fold, they've folded it over and then cover stitched it, haven't they? Yeah, yeah. They should yeah. have fold, still folded um, it over twice. Well, they should have folded. You fold it over and then you you bend it back round and you let the machine do what it does. Uh, and then when you flip it back, but that it's 
it's not successful that yeah. because it's supposed to conceal the raw edge. So if you're confused about cover stitches and, and it, the comment was made, a lot of people might not have yeah. ever used yeah. cover stitch. You are going to refer to what? Uh, the sample. Yeah. So that you're going to go check, how do I do this? And you're going to look at that I just and, go. and it, don't get the right information because <laughs> yeah. a lot of, a lot of people that are very sculptural, very artistic, a lot of people, you'd be surprised, have a, a problem with the written word, mm. text. Yes, yeah, so you just so want to see something. A challenge. It's a challenge for them. And I know in my teaching, I come across a lot of that. So they're going to go refer to the sample. Mm. And I'm wondering if you have a picture of the collar because... Oh, I do. Yes. Um, oh, I'm glad you did. Let me see. They, they, that they... is exactly... They yeah. asked them to understitch it. Well, well, did they ask them to understitch it? Because some of them were understitching it to make their sewing better, weren't they? Yeah. But this isn't yeah. understitched, is it? And they talked about, the, yeah, they talked about uh, having understitch in the challenge, mm. one of the criteria. But yet, again, as you're showing, there's no understitching yeah. on that color. So if you're having, if you're confused and you're having trouble reading the pattern, um, you go to refer to the sample and it wouldn't be there, yeah. so you wouldn't do it. Yeah. It was, a, it was a hefty challenge for sure, but let's go to the, 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 the fabric itself then with, with working with stretch. Mm -hmm. How do we get the best out of it? What, like even cutting it when you're cutting it out, because as soon as you cut that, as you can see, it's going to roll. So what do you do with your pattern pieces? How do we... How do we hold them and not not will it will it stretch even more? Will 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 if we if we manhandle it too much, will it will it will it elongate? Will it will it lose its shape? Tell me more about that. Yeah, so uh, this is all about practice and preparation. So when you're cutting out, um, you know, the very act of putting a pin in, sometimes that fights the stretch of the fabric. Sometimes people will put a pattern down and they'll try to smooth out the fabric into stretching it. So then they'll pin it and then the pattern will pop up uh. because they've smoothed the fabric too, too, too hard and then stretched it out. And then now the pattern is, you know, bigger than the, the space that you've allowed with your pins. That's a problem. Cutting out is a real trick. So um, you just have to uh, lay the fabric out and let it relax, put the pattern on top, and then just very carefully make small cuts instead of sweeping cuts. Oh, right. Because the fabric is going to fight it. And it's just practice. And there's so many different kinds of knits. So we saw in, uh, just briefly, we saw them using a rotary cutter yeah. for the transformation challenge. But I want to talk today about preparation. Mm, cool. So I've made it samples to just talk about how to get work ready yeah let's go uh, over and then to we'll, the... we'll talk about the various aspects of this challenge so okay let's go let's to this see. camera we should see. ah look okay. at that okay oh, love it um i'm i was very um brave because i didn't have any stretch fleece so i the only stretchy fabric i have enough of is swimwear oh, so <laughs> i no. thought you know if I can show this in swimwear, it'll work for <laughs> anything. <laughs> so I'm using a ballpoint needle, and it's uh, size 80. And I'm using regular sewing thread, nothing special. And the first thing I did was to make a sample. Wow. And we always talk about doing that first, yeah. OK? And that's There's, not popping. I, I, Those stitches aren't popping, no, are they? No, they're not popping. Everything's fine. I adjusted the tension. And, and that's as much wear and tear as that's going to take. Yeah. Um, longer stitch on my industrial, it's three and a bit. It's uh, not far off a basting stitch, but make a sample. Always make a sample. Um, preparation of the knitwear is, is interesting as well. Um, the two things I like to do, one is use a fusible. There's a small strip of fusible on here. And I've just made sure that the fusible strip is over the seam line. And I've not put it on with a hot iron. Okay. I've just put it on warm enough so that it glues. Because all you need is it to just stay that seam. Um, 
And then when you sew it, of course, then slippery. the job done. Yeah, I know it's really. I just loved how it just went on your hand and you let go and it just went. <laughs> you see, um, uh, the other thing you can do is you can stay stitch. Can you see that? Oh, just come, come down a bit. I can't move any further. That's it. There you go. Yeah. So can you see that row of stay stitching yeah, here? Yeah. So this is machine stitching. It isn't as effective. Um, and, but I'm trying this on the curve. This is the neck curve. Okay. Um, you can also sew a stay stitch on the straight. Yeah. But uh, in this case, I just want to show you, I've got two lengths here. And let's get this out of the way. <laughs> Your desk so looks you as can messy see, like mine. I know. Oh, it's a mess in here. All right. On this side, this is a center back seam. And on this side, I've used a fusible stay. Okay. So it's just fusible interfacing. It looks like this. It comes as a it's, tape, yeah? Comes as a, it, it comes in a roll. Oh, you've cut it thin. It, I get you. Yeah. It comes in a roll. Yeah. yeah. And I've, cu I've cut a, a, about a three eighths of an inch yeah. stripe off that. This is really handy. And the other thing I've used is this Rigeline product, which is, which is on the bias. Oh. But there is a core running through it. Oh, I can see on that. Yeah. Yeah. That, that keeps it from stretching. Yeah. It's not as secure as this. <laughs> that's, a, that's a woven, that's a warp and web, yeah. but these are the two products I'm going to be using. I just want to show you that if you stay stitch with the machine, it's not really effective. And what can happen to you <gasps> is you can end up with yes. one side. And I think some of the sewers the had that, didn't they? Yeah. They did, <gasps> absolutely. So you can go back to your pattern yeah. with this and you can measure the size that you need <gasps> and then cut two of these strips, apply them the same way, and then, and then check them. Okay. Check them to make sure that they're the, the, same, <clears throat> the same size. So um, now on this one, instead of stay stitching with, uh, with my machine stitching, so slippery, I've, put, I've applied the Rigeline, the bias one to the neck, yeah. straight to the shoulder, and the straight to, as it happens in this one, it's a center back seam. So that's a little bit about preparation okay. and making a sample. Now let's talk about um, the garment itself. And there's a couple of things I have to say. Oh, I'm so chuffed um, about your sound. I can't get over how good you sound, oh, Carol. Me too. <laughs> I hope for you as you too. appreciate it too. You sound brilliant. Because somebody put in the comments, Carol sounds really I know, fun. I know. Because um, <laughs> you, you were away from the machine, so you were like in the distance. So this is wonderful, uh, really wonderful. This oh, look at that. Good. That looks nice. Okay, now here we are. Can we see what we're doing? Yeah. Now, this isn't the same pattern as we had in the um, pattern challenge, but you can see what we're after here. Yeah. We've got we've got our funnel neck, yeah, which is prepared for a zip insertion right here. Yeah, that is going to match up. Oh, beautiful! And then we've done our inside of the collar in a contrast. Yeah, and we have our so under stitching. Okay, now I'm just going to peel away because I thought I'll show you the preparation. Yes. Okay. So on the inside where the zip goes, I have my straight woven yeah. fusible. And because the leaf edge um, of the collar is on a curve yeah. and the neck edge is on a curve, I have used the Rigeline on the bias. It's a softer, um, but it, it handles the curve. Yes, yeah. Okay? I've done the same thing on the inside oh, of the collar seam yeah. down at the neck. I can see that. Okay. Yeah. All right. So, and on the shoulder, let's go to the shoulder. I've put, again, the woven fusible to keep that under control because it's a straight line. It doesn't curve. Um, on the neck edge, I've sewn the seam and then I clipped the curves. So the fabric will now move. Oh. I don't know if they did that on the sewing bee. They, pro they probably didn't have the time yeah, to do that. I would have thought they didn't have the time, I'm sure. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, I, yeah and I've also clipped the curves on the leaf edge of the collar. 
Brilliant. So I did that after I understitched. But look, this is swimwear. This is the most unruly of fabrics. And you can see how just putting that preparation. Oh, and look how good that looks. Yeah, yeah. Now, one more thing I want to show you about this is now we're coming to stitch in the ditch. Okay. So when you understitch, you're bringing everything to one side. You're encouraging it this way. Yeah. And you can see that you've got that little lip of the main fabric on the top. Okay. Then this fabric falls down. Oh, just come down a bit. Inside of your. Okay. That's How's perfect. That? Yes, perfect. Okay. Thank you. So you can see a little blue stripe of the main fabric yeah. here on the top. Yeah. Then you see the, the seam here for your yeah. inside of the collar. And then you're understitching. All this treatment makes it so that this is now becomes slightly longer. Yes. Okay? Yes. So you've got a bit more. You've got a bit more room to work with with the inside of the collar because it's folding in this way. Yeah. Now, one more thing to show you so that when you do stitch in the ditch, everything is is going to be lying flat, and you're not going to have any stitching that comes in or out of this ditch and it's all about making sure that everything is in alignment mm -hmm. so i would say that it would be a very good idea ah. to set up a parallel roll of stitches okay so let's just work with this section can you see this Stuart? yeah because, yeah you're putting in okay. big long basting okay. stitches yeah and let's just make another row here and with your un the underside, you're working with part of your, your hand here. These fingers are making sure that everything is lying flat and sandwiched. Yeah. So you've, got two, you've got two fingers here and you've got three fingers underneath. So we're sandwiching everything together. Now let's put one more row in, which is oh. now going to include the seam allowances, right? They're like those big Vs we did when we were doing the pad... What was that? The shoulder pad? What, what, what was it called? That's it. The padding stitch. You're absolutely oh, right. That. Oh, you're such a good student. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> so there we are. So now you see what we've done. We've padded that together. Yeah. So that everything is going to line up. And when you stitch in the ditch, nothing's going to get out of line. Yeah. Everything's going to be nice and flat. So, and, and then... Look how crisp that is. Oh, come down take a bit. The zip. Oh, there you go. Oh. You see how crisp that is. Okay? Yeah. And inside here on the center front edge, I've got that same reinforcement. It's the woven one. It's this one. So on yeah. all your straight lines, go ahead and use this and cut it. You know, you don't have to waste it. You can you can make strips of three eighths, half inch, yeah. three quarter, whatever, on a curve. Use this. You can see how it's curling. Yeah. It wants to curl. It's brilliant. You see? Is, is that yeah. um, a vi that black one that with the um, the reinforcement in, is that a violin one? It is. Yeah, I thought it it's was. It's violin. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, I might have said Rigeline by accident. <laughs> oh, no, no. The, it's a violin. Uh, the violin yeah. is the company, but I think they probably call yeah. it Rigeline, don't they? As a, as no, a the Rigeline is a is a boning product. No, it's, oh, right. it's violin. You're absolutely right. Um, yeah. what, what I'll make sure we do is because that's from McCulloch and Wallace, isn't it? It is. Yeah. I'll try or and, William G. Or I'll try yeah, and put the links suppliers. down below to that actual because uh, violin have got loads of different products of interfacing and bonder web yeah. um, uh, to make it easy for you because I know many of you might just want to go and, and purchase some. Exactly right. And you're right to mention there's so many products yeah. that can help you set up control in your project. Yeah. Okay. And you can't lose, you know, everything's going to come out nice and crisp. It's all going to line up because you're insisting yeah. that the space that the pattern <coughs> gives you is adhered to. So turn it over. Uh, can I just see where you would, uh, the stitch in the ditch where you're going to put your needle? Okay. So we're going to put the needle right. right here in the ditch because we've pressed the seam opened. That's the ditch right yes. here. Yes. That is the ditch you're going to sew through, but on the other side. side. Right. And you're going to catch. You're going to 
catch that, yeah. this layer, okay? So let's turn it over. And here's the curved seam. And this is where you're going to sew, yeah. right in here. And the needle will find its way in there. Yes, because you've pressed everything out. So you 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 yeah. actually haven't got an, an equal amount of fabric on either side, have you? Because it's yeah, it's spread both That's sides. That's right. And so and I so I pressed this on the wrong side here. Yeah. Then I turned it over and I pressed it pressed on this side brilliant. as well. Yeah. To make sure that seam is well and truly flattened out. Yeah. Yeah. And because then I it's yeah, you want to be able to see this. Yeah. You know, the needle is a long way away yeah. from where you are. Yeah. So you want to make sure that your presser foot is well lit and you, you've got a good sight line to it so that the needle just, you know, <coughs> it just rides right in there. I presume you're okay with your presser foot. I know with domestic machines, we can actually use presser foots where the toe is open to give you more visual space, but you, you're you're mm. you're you're a pro. You don't need to choose <laughs> to change your your presser foot, do you? Because you you can see. But uh, yes, have a look. If you if you've got a, a posh machine, you'll probably have a box full of different feet. So mm. look for the an, an open toe one. You might even find a brilliant stitch in the ditch foot that has a groove that comes. Like, uh, think of a, ah. a ship and its rudder coming down, and that rudder yeah. would would glide through that groove as well. So look for a stitch in the ditch foot to help. I think I remember you telling me about this. In, now, in the patchwork world, we yeah. stitch in the ditch a lot. I hate uh -huh. it because it's so hard. Because in, in, in the patchwork world, we wouldn't necessarily press open our seams because in quilting that actually can make a seam uh less strong because it's open you're you're you would quilt through the th the ditch which is just the thread in, in essence isn't it i see yes um, but um yeah. so we would then uh fold our fabric when we uh do our seam we fold to the dark side so we would actually have three layers of fabric on one side and then one layer on the other so our, our press of oh. foot could be a bit wonky whereas yours because it's pressed open and so beautifully yes. flat like yeah. that your press yeah. of foot will glide over won't it it will and when you're sewing you know your needle is here you can always just separate yeah, yeah. You brilliant know, you use your hands when you're yeah. sewing and i can and, you know i can see your stitching there you could just see can't you yeah, look see? at that yeah. everyone yeah. yeah and nothing's breaking nothing's no. pulling because the seams are already reinforced oh. now just a just a quick word about the pocket if i may of course you can yeah okay the pocket in the zip i'm not quite sure Where? oh look you, uh, you're... Yeah. Oh, what is it? Okay. The, the ripstop stuff. Yeah. This is the so this is the ripstop okay. nylon, this... and I'm just <laughs> going to me, bring our old. There you go. Um, I've got my old friend, our old friend, the clapper out for this. Oh, one, I love I'm just it. Show you one thing. Um, when you're doing a pocket, um, and you've got your the the window that you have to um, insert yeah. the zip in. Um, the nice thing about ripstop nylon is is that when you go to mark this through to your fabric. You actually make a hole in the ripstop, so you'll see that pinhole. But first, everybody, make sure that the pocket is at right angles and it's square or it's a true rectangle. Because when you're sewing parallel things to the zip and the pocket has to line mm. up and there's another zip, you want to make sure you're dealing with parallel lines. So ah. Make sure your pattern is square. That's the first thing. Okay? And then when I, when I was sewing this window, like I said... I took my pattern and I just put a pin through and then I'll do it over here because when you're marking your fabric, you can kind of make a big hole for yourself and then you can see it. Now, you may not be able to see that at home, but that's a nice way to mark. Yeah. And then make sure once you get your window, make sure take some tool that will give you some parallel lines and make sure everything is at right angles. Because you want to make sure that this window is a perfect rectangle. So do check. All right? Yeah. Make sure everything is square. And then 
I've actually doubled the size of this pocket. Instead of putting a small facing in, mm -hmm. I've doubled the whole pocket so that when I turn this through, I've got two layers. And that's strong. Yeah. Wow. Ironing on it interfacing, which has a completely different set of properties to this ripstop nylon, yeah. is going to be a problem. Yeah. So why don't you just double up a fabric which is already taut, which is already under control. Yeah. And then we sewed our box out. We've clipped into the corner. Yep. And then here's where the clapper comes in handy. Because what I'm doing here is I'm actually going to hand press these seams open. Oh, I love a finger press. Yeah. Like that. You see, yeah. you do that a lot in quilting because oh, you've got to so start. Yeah. yeah. You see? So that skips a step of having to go back to the iron yeah. and not going to risk burning yeah. this okay oh, which so then we did have a few issues of that didn't we uh, a couple yeah. of them had the iron mm -hmm. <laughs> and then, then the interface it got stuck and then it was on the iron it's like ah i know and that then and then the whole thing is out of whack yeah and if you make a mistake sometimes the easiest thing to do is just cut another one just start over yeah now you've you've given it a finger press i'm not i won't spend an, a whole lot of time on this but i just wanted you to see how crisp everything does come out oh i can see it already oh yeah you see now this side has been finger pressed that side hasn't so you see the difference yeah, absolutely okay. how much and now you've turned it out and what's left to do just turn both under you see it yeah right? and you can again sew a uh, your patch yeah. yeah and then your zip can get inserted right in there and everything will be fine uh, and everything will, will, will match up perfectly. Look Let's just see if I can do this. Whoops, there we go. Look at yeah, that, see? everyone. Yeah, see there? We're yeah. right down below the end. We're right there. Um, so a bit of trick about how to set in that zip. And and make sure you get it right way around. Uh, yes. <laughs> yeah. Though saying that, it a... doesn't, doesn't necessarily matter because Georgie, who put her zip in upside down, she still came second. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's right. And oh. it's okay. The pocket works, doesn't it? Yeah. Okay. So oh, just a fabulous. few tips fabulous. there for you. Okay. Yeah, it's ah. great. Yeah. <sighs> okay. Well, when you look at how slippery that, would you say it was swimwear, didn't you? Yes. Yeah. But the actually, slippery. how nice was it? It looked really great, didn't it? And it's just about control. It's, And I think... It's knowing knowing your fabric, and that's why it's so important to do a few tests. Yeah. Try things out. Make a smaller version of what it is that you're doing, and just get to know it. If you ever have to use that type of fabric, do you go, oh, no? <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, or actually, have you learned to love that sort of man-made mm -hmm. specialist type of fabric? Everything's a challenge, isn't it? Yeah. And if because I'm in the business, people bring me things and they say, I want you to make this out of this. Now, it, it's my job to say that's not suitable or, well, let's give it a go and yeah. let's try. Um, but generally, there, there are so many ways, as you mentioned, about all these products that are on the market that you can use to tame the job. Yeah. And actually, that brings me on to a nice point. Um, uh, who was it? And uh, I'm trying to think, uh, look at my list. I think it was uh, Luke. They got a um, mesh. I think it was Luke. He was going, uh, they, sorry, not he. They were mm. going to use a mesh and they bought it online and couldn't, oh, yeah. and then got it through. And then suddenly, oh no, this doesn't, this doesn't stretch at all. There was hardly any stretch in it. You can't beat uh, going into a shop to feel it and and to get it. So I know, and I know they probably didn't have a chance to do that. They had to maybe had to buy online because there aren't many specialist fabric shops yeah. around. Um, but yes, yeah, buy a little bit first, then test it, see it, and then if it works, then buy the, your three meters worth because that's that's difficult, yeah. isn't it? 
It is. It's hard to be stung online like that because you, like yeah. you say, you can't, you know, you can't evaluate anything. But once he got the fabric in and he realized it didn't stretch, there might have been some things he could have done, yeah. like just put a pleat in, a soft yeah. pleat or a little bit of shearing, just add some, you know, add some more length or width, whatever it is that yeah. he needed. That would have been a way to do that. Let's look anyway at now the pattern challenge, at how they did, and talk about a couple of them in detail. Then we're going to go to the made to measure because they had stretch fabrics in the made to measure mm. too. But let's have a quick look at the, the pattern challenge. Um, and let's go to the group shot, if I can find the group shot, which is there. Oh, yes. uh, let's yes. take a few of those pictures out in the background. So there we go. Um, I think colour was a big part of the criteria. Uh, they said, we want you to play with colours, give us some vi vibrant combinations. And I know we've discussed about colour and how the judges will often uh, evaluate colour rather than the actual garment. But clearly here, colour was part of the mm. assessment criteria. And when you look at it, the, the colour choices in, in certain respects really do work, don't they? Oh, yes, yes. So there's some real popping, uh, colour popping going on there. Yeah. No, they, they, look, they look good in a lineup, don't they? They do. Uh, we have a few to look at in particular. Uh, Susie's I have... Uh, Hi, uh, one as I've highlighted uh, because the the, the colour combinations the zip, look at the um, I've got my pen working, look at that I know mm. we talk about junction points don't we and That's nicely done, isn't very it? nicely done. yeah and the, and the teal and the bright pink that's, so, that's really successful isn't it now you can see that the zip and the pocket is not completely parallel, that's what yeah. I was saying about just you know test your square of your pockets and yeah. make sure then that won't happen very simple thing to do but she's handled it incredibly well because the collar is is meeting at the top and yeah. at the neck nice job yeah uh then we have uh don there and that leads us quite nicely on because we were just complimenting susie on that junction and then that mm. one was out there and that one was out there. It's hard, isn't it? You do, uh, it's hard. To, but when you do get that junction right, you do feel rather chuffed with yourself, don't you? Oh, definitely, definitely. And it's just something you just have to see ahead of time. You, yeah. know, you just have to know that that's what you're working toward. Because when I think the time element is is the real problem, yes. there's some very good sewers and it we're not seeing their best work. It's because of no, the time crunch. It is, and that is infuriating. We did talk about that last week. Just give them a bit more time because we at home as well, I think we would get more excited about the show because we'd be seeing more finished garments and we'd be seeing mm -hmm. better quality. We'd be seeing the sewer's actual talent rather than it being messed up because they've got no time. And sometimes I think Patrick, bless him, goes, oh, well, oh, if you had a bit more time, you would have got this finished. You're like, no, really? Yeah. This is, you, no it's kidding. <laughs> yeah, so I mean, it, this is the second week in a row that most people haven't finished the yeah, pattern challenge. Yeah. This, is, this has not happened in, in earlier yeah. series. And I think, I think the viewers are getting then it feels a bit flat after every round because it's like, oh, not finished. Oh, not. We want to see something lovely. So give them the time and then let them all make some wonderful garments. And then we'd be really honing in on the, the analysis, wouldn't we? Was her sewing better? Because they'd have yeah. to go so more detailed, wouldn't they? In the, in the analysis. It, yeah, we're not comparing like for like, are we? Yeah. In this case. Um, and I thought this was one of the better hems. Don uh, is yeah. one of my favorite sewers. I really, I think he's yeah. an excellent technician and he put a zigzag hem in it and it looks brilliant. Yeah, absolutely. Sometimes those basic ones, the, the, you know, the simple zigzag without having to go to the trendy machine, they work, they've always worked in the past, haven't they? Absolutely, case in point. Um, Marcus, who won, uh, let's close that one, that one, and where's Marcus, is there. He got fabric from everyone. I know we sort of analysed him a bit, uh, me and Ting, on the other one because he didn't quite finish his hem round the back. 
but he still won. But that's why I said I think the judges had colour higher up their criteria and the colour choices, because he had 10 different fabrics of colour, yeah. it really did work, didn't it? It did. And I'm just wondering if he got his um, sleeves on the wrong armhole because the pitch of the sleeve is very backward on this one. So I think that was another oh. problem. Oh, yeah. my word. I, yeah. 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 It's going I the other way. Suffered from that, yes. Well, and he still won. He still came first, even though he How had the that, eh? even though he How had the arm that? and the hem. Yep. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Interesting, isn't it? But he did handle the pockets and the collar yes, very well. Absolutely. And I think did he understitch properly? Did he did he understitch I'm not the right sure. way? Uh, I don't think I've got a close up. I think I've only got a close up of the back. Um, but you can still marvel at uh, how yeah. how it sits there. But I think probably. And, yeah, and have to say the color combination of using all ten really yeah. worked well. He mixed it up very well. Um, and then Alex, uh, let's have a look at Alex's one. Look at that. Nice, soft. Yeah. A softer combination, but well executed, and still the complementary colors do work. They do. Because the choice of zip actually adds to the richness of it. Because he's got two different colors of orange. Um, oh, no, Alex, is, uh, is this Alex? Alex oh, is oh, a sheep. Alex, Alex, yes. sorry, um, sorry. But sh this is now what interesting. She had the time to put the um, applique on the back. This is beautifully done. I thought it was such a happy thing to, <laughs> yeah. to finish off with. And, okay, the only thing she needed to do was press it. Yeah. Okay, yeah, it's... Yeah, it's a, a little bit wavy, but why not? I, I was really sore at the judges for saying, you know, for almost talking her down uh, for doing that. Yeah. But it, no, it did a beautiful job. Well, if, why not? if she had the time to do it, um, yeah. but I know as you, you look there, it's hard to tell, but um, comfort here uh, struggled and didn't finish. Um, Don uh, had a hem missing and Susie, so... Yeah. It, it must have been hard, but when you look at them there, they're, they're, they're nearly there. Uh, but considering the challenge, it was a lot to fit in. Now let's go to the made to measure. And let's go to this one, a very special picture, not this one here. Let's get rid of that one. <laughs> Look at ah, that. Yes. <laughs> this is a made to okay. measure from Carol, everyone. The 2012 Olympics. Tell us about this. OK, so this is a this is for Team Britain, the shooting. This is for the trap and the skeet. And uh, this is a, a gilet, which uh, although you can't see it, there is a half belt there is a pair of patched cartridge pockets that have to hold 25 shells. So the pocket has to be connected up to the shoulder seam. So the weight of those shells doesn't bring the jacket down. So it, to put any stress on the shoulder line. Um, this is made of padded quilted cotton along the center front, and then a, a dyed um, bright blue mesh along the sides and the back to aerate the athlete so it's not too hot and then a handmade bias binding that goes all the way around the arms and the neck and and the bottom but I, I'm glad you included this photo we talked about it it just goes to show how when you're making a, um, an athlete's garment or a garment for a specific pur purpose, how important it is to talk to that individual and find out what it is that they want, what they need in comfort, what they need in um, you know, durability, yeah. um, how they're go it's going to help their performance, all sorts of factors. And for this particular garment, I, I did the whole team, and uh, I think there were 14 uh, people, with, including the alternate. Wow. And this, this uh, Steve Wilson, he won the gold medal. We had six fittings. But he was very particular. We made sure that we handled every one of his requirements. And he won the gold medal. He was comfortable and it, everything worked for him. And when I looked at this challenge, I seriously, I had to wonder how many people actually took, it, took into account what the athletes wanted and, and their comfort factor. So yeah. I've, I've got a few things to say about that, you know, from my experience addressing athletes.
And this, well, it's, it's just come up recently, hasn't it? Because we've obviously got the Olympics this year. And I think um, I, I saw an article, uh, the Americans are, are, are unhappy with, with Nike. Uh, what was the, um, what did they say? Uh, my hoo-ha is gonna be out. <laughs> One of the Olympians said, the uh, Nike, uh, they, they slammed Nike for um, skimpy oh women's goodness. track kit. And oh, uh, the, the, dear, dear, it's this dear. idea, as you say, function, uh, overlook and 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 then this idea of um i think the gymnasts had it on the last olympics didn't they the, that they wanted them to be less about uh, almost is it like the the the, the sexualizing the body let's yes. make an outfit yes. for the 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 olympian to wear it's not about trying to to f is it feminize them or something it, all those discussions yeah. were going on weren't they yeah, I wonder if it suffers from the same thing that the high street suffers from, where by they're designing things on a mannequin, which is symmetrical and not exactly muscle bound, yeah. these mannequins. And then suddenly, I mean, a, a Olympic gymnasts, well, Olga Corbett, her day is, has been changed dramatically. If you look at Simone Bowles now yeah. and how muscular she yeah. is and how built up she is, Olga Corbett was a tiny thing. Um, and her, her offering... Uh, on the mat was completely mm. different. Um, so I, I wonder if that has something to do with it. We're designing things digitally, mm. you know, with our, you know, you know, procreate and, and, and Photoshop yeah, and all that. Yeah. And, and yeah. then we're working with mannequins that are symmetrical. And actually that's a good case in point because I think somebody did a, um, a, 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 a green, yellow and a black gymnast outfit. Yeah. Let's go to it. And um, that, okay. That was Lauren. It was uh, Jamaica. Yes. Okay. Beautiful. Striking. But this is nylon and plastic. Yeah. Is that going to be comfortable for a gymnast? <laughs> and a crew, a crew neck, you know, when you're somersaulting around. Do you need that? Or would a scoop neck be better? Um, you what? Um, what? Coming, coming right down like that? So Something you get, like that. You get yeah. rid of the arms. Yeah. Is that what you say? Yes. Well, just to, to you know, to be more free yes. and have the arms free because, yeah. you know, the, the 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 somersaults and the you know the round offs and the cartwheels yeah. and all that. I just wonder if that crew neck is a bit it's, too oh, intrusive. Yeah. Oh, I see. Come you know? come down a bit more. Yes. Come down a yeah. bit. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, I suppose it. <laughs> The this is made to measure. Uh, I, I presume our sewers are, are just finding patterns off the shelf, aren't they? Um, yes. But then, if if you've got time to practice, maybe you could alter the pattern. But you would only alter the pattern, I suppose, with with confidence and experience. Um, something that you yes. get with time. And in this case, I would say, well, let's take that pattern, but let's leave a little bit of inlay. Let's leave some flexibility so that if we need a bit more under the bum, it's there. Yeah, I see. And that's where you can, when you do your fit, then you can say, actually, a bit too much skin is showing. This is a bit too skimpy. Yeah. My whatever is going to show or whatever yes, is going to happen. Yes, my hoo-ha. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so then, and I think, is this the one that the elastic popped out Indeed, as well? yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. But it was a bit too cut, cut up on the on the yeah. back side. I thought. But w mm. when you look at that material, that material must have been hard to work with. It is sequence is very difficult, very difficult to sew through. Mm -hmm. So full respect to Lauren there for tackling that. Definitely. Um, let's yeah. look at a couple of others because uh, I then want to move on uh, to someone else. Marcus with uh, Team GB. Um, in a nice fitting, loose fitting top, because this was for someone, I'm just gonna check my notes, who is speed climbing. So the t-shirt's a bit looser, a bit more flexibility there. Um, and he's made the chalk uh, little pocket there too. I like the neckline and, there. Yeah, I think this is good. And I like that, you know, the shorts are long, longer yeah. and they're tighter on the leg. Yeah. So. As long as that's a stretchier fabric, then that it's not going to be in the way, flapping around or anything. So it's nice that it's contained on the body. 
And let's go to Georgie, which we saw just at the beginning because she got Garment of the Week of this. Now, I yeah. when I saw it, I was like, oh, wow, this is kind of cool because it's got different fabrics. And I know uh, sport, they like to mess around with the mesh, don't they? And they're different fabrics. And I like the swoops. Uh, mm -hmm. But I suppose practicality, it was a, um, what was it? Was it a sprinting kit, a track kit? Um, mm -hmm. Just checking, uh, Ge Georgie track kit, yes. Um, uh, Trinidad and Tobago. Um, yes, yes. So I don't know how flexible it, it was. What did you think of this, Carol? I thought this, uh, well, this, I like it from a design standpoint and, and the color palette is very nice, but I, I just, looked at that and I felt uncomfortable just ah. looking at it you know I thought that it particularly on the bus line that, that this this line under the bust it didn't it, there's just not enough room yeah. you know it's it's very I found it very claustrophobic just looking at it also the black swoop around the yes. neck looked it, like it was very close to the neck yeah and I I do we have a back view of that I don't sadly no no, no. But I think I just thought that I think Patrick did say maybe that was a little bit, um, but uh, I, I think it's the experimenting, isn't it? It's it's not something you would actually see whether that was an off the shelf pattern or whether Georgie adapted it and made it her own, which if she did, fabulous in that respect. Yeah. It uh, just looked really constricting on the top. Yes, for me, yeah. high up under the arm there with the black right under the armpit. Um, I didn't yes, look if like you're running, was... that might cause yeah. a bit of chafing, mightn't it, I suppose. But yeah. I know we're going into, into detail. Yeah. Um, one that I know we both liked, but you in particular said, oh, are we going to talk about Don? I went like, yes, uh, is Don. And I've got a special page for Don because if... If you love, um, uh, like me, with junctions, uh, you've got to love his this skirt because it was magnificent, wasn't it? This was one of my favourites. All oh, right. Um, and I love I thought... the, the colour, the soft combination. Yeah. You know, golf is a contemplative sport. You know, it's not loud. It's not racy. It's, it's... And I like the softness of this. And I think I remember Don saying that actually the skirt is the most important part of the uniform. Yeah. Uh, for a golfer that has to fulfill a certain criteria look at that look at that look it's pristine yeah beautiful that center seam the there yeah. yeah and then look at this one look at that oh, junction yeah look on the waist i remember that <laughs> I remember that well yeah and then always oh, handled that so beautifully going round to the pocket and then down here look at the crispness of that so well handled. Now that's all about knowing how to handle the fabric. Um, okay, and it, it's the time element again. Um, I think they're supposed to. They oh, look at the concealed zip. Yeah. It's superb. Yeah, that is superb. You can't even see where it ends, no. can you? No, no, no. So perfection that. Um, and then the time, the time element. I forgot what the time element was for this, but. He got everything done except setting in the collar. Yeah, where is it there? Yeah. It's, uh, yeah, they had four and a half hours. <clears throat> um, yeah. yeah. Lovely buttonholes. Everything is fine. And that's kind of a, a jersey knit for the um, yeah. top, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. So that's, you know, so that's... Very, very close. It doesn't, it doesn't look like it, but it's very nearly done. Yes. Yeah. So... Um, when you look oh, at it from there... Yeah. Beautiful. Oh, well Kate. done, Don, for that. Um, well, there we go. Let's move on. Let's finish. As we as we said, we will do questions. So we uh, after the show airs and the Carol then goes, we're going to do this topic. I then post on YouTube on our community channel. Um, and if you're a member, you'll, you'll know where that is. And I think you'll get a notification that I've posted. And we have a few questions. So I, I think that most of them are discussion questions. So you don't have to go to your <laughs> machine and you don't have to go rooting around for buttons like last week. No, I think everyone secretly enjoyed that. Um, yeah. <clears throat> uh, uh, practical stitches as, as said about, because uh, of, of talking about stretch, she says, have you used the Mariflex or Eloflex threads on knits? 
Um, and what threads do you recommend when working with knits? Well, I tend to use regular sewing thread. Okay. Um, 30, yeah. 40, or the Gutemann, which is, um, yeah, it's around, the, it's around 40, 50, I think. Uh, silk thread if I want something a bit stronger. But as you saw, I, I prepare things yeah. so that it, it, it accepts a regular sewing thread. Yeah. If I'm overlocking, then I do use a stretch thread. And the one that I, that I just happen to have here is the serif lock. So How do you that, spell that I use. Um, it's S E R A F L O C K. And I use that. I just have, have it out because that's what I use for swimwear. If oh. I'm overlocking. Yeah. So I use that because it's a fluffier, stretchier. Um, and it accommodates the seam expanding. And so. Yeah. Um, and, and I can understand from a couture point of view, you will want to still be using natural too, and just thread from that point of view. I know in the commercial world, like Vileen, Gutzman, they will have all types of these threads that they suggest that you use for metallics or for sequins and things. And they will often end in flex, like Mariflex. And each company will have their oh, own. Yes. Um, as we said, best off just buying some and having a play and see how it works. Yes. See how it works with your machine too. But I know as soon as you start going to those threads, you'll sometimes run into issues with your bobbin uh, and what threads to have in your bobbin and then um, with your needle. And mm. I've, I've done a lot of research on sewing machine needles. I'm gonna drop all the links in below because half of the sewers probably could have had a much easier time with the denim skirt last week had they maybe used a denim needle uh, yeah. or even the top stitching needle. Uh, so Class A have made these different needles to suit different parts, different fabrics. And the top stitching needle is lovely because it's got a huge eye, <laughs> if that's English, a bigger eye. Um, and I actually use a top stitching needle as my normal needle. I think it's the top stitching. Oh, I've got one here yeah. um, and I'm just looking. I'm going to try that. I, I'm good. Yeah, I'm interested. Uh, I'm going if to try I cover that my out. face up, will that? Uh, oh yes. I've got oh, my I've got it. my light on, so I don't think you can see. Um, yeah. Uh, it's a top stitching. I've got a uh, medium, so this is ninety fourteen. Mm. Uh, but it's just got a bigger eye, so uh, uh, you know. So when you're drawing your needle, um, most needles will have an eye like that. The top stitching will be almost like that. So it's way easier if you can't see very well and you don't have one of those cool threaders. You could just thread it by your eyes anyway. But also, um, top stitching thread is thicker. So when it's yeah. going through the eye, it f feeds it through so your machine has less issues. Yes, less, dr less drag on it. Yeah, less, less, absolutely. Yeah. I'm going to try that. I'm going to I'm going to look into that. Oh, Stuart. do it. And another one as well, an other underrated needle is the metallic needle. They're often yellow or it's called metafill. Metafill or metallic and again a larger eye and it's all about the shaft and I've got a, a quick little video here which I, I can just show you for the top stitching needle. Have a look at this, Carol. It's only 30 seconds long um, and, okay. and see this. Um, the top stitching needle. Uh, where is it? And I have to uh, say, this oh. is my favorite needle. No, I need to do that again. <laughs> let's do this and then let's do, uh, can I do, oh, I might not be able to do it live. Where is it? Top stitching. Hang on there, everyone. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> the top stitching needle. And I have to say, this is my favorite needle and it's the one I use an awful lot of the time. In fact, nearly most of the time. It has an extra large eye, which accommodates thick top stitching thread. Extra sharp point two, which allows the needle to penetrate through all the fabrics, like you would do when top stitching or even when quilting. There you go. How oh. cool was that? Very cool. I like the sound effects too. <laughs> I've made oh, loads of them. Music. I've done one for the for the jeans needle, which they sometimes call denim. I've done one for the 
the ballpoint needle. I've done one for leather. It can game change your sewing if you if you just want I'm to get. Gonna try that. Oh, right, yeah. I'll drop all the links below. I've made one long video and then I've also made lots of little videos. So if you're unsure, um, and, uh, and they've color coded everything. So top stitching is orange. I think Schmetz do the same color codes mm. as well, uh, but I'm a class A fan. Um, uh, and um, uh, so I often use, they've made the quilting. Oh, I've got to cover my face up, haven't I? <laughs> the quilting. Can yep. you see when it, oh yes, no, it covered my yes. face. That's, that's better, good. Yeah. Um, and it really does make a difference. And also, do you know, Carol, some people hardly ever change their sewing needle. Oh, they cost pennies. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. A new pack, project, new needle every yeah, time. New pack project. of these, there's six needles, I think are a two or three quid. So divide that by six, that makes it what? Not even 50p each. Yeah, new needle each time. There we go. That's the teacher yeah. stuff done with. <laughs> let's go <laughs> to another question. Uh, let's go to my computer. I've gone out of sync now. Uh, there we go. Uh, Tom, uh, who often comes, well, does come back every year uh, to join in the discussion, the sewing bee discussion, says, uh, discussion about negative ease. Uh, we call it negative ease in the knitting world. It's the um, the uh, the excess fabric that you might have to make it a bit more slouchy or a bit more of a box fit. Um, I don't know what you would call it. Do you call it a negative ease in the uh, couture world? Tolerance. We would call that tolerance. Right. How yes. much tolerance do you need in a garment to make it comfortable? Yeah. Or so you can see Colin has purposely not given me that much tolerance. <laughs> there may be... Yep. Uh, you know, a, a, an inch or so, and on my gym top, there is no tolerance. It will, because I like it fitted, that will be n negative ease. So mm -hmm. when my okay. <laughs> rippling okay. muscles yeah. go in, it, <laughs> it will come out. Often with knitting, you can get garments five to 10 centimeters of ease. And, and that's a lot of, you know, it's almost like the ripples of a curtain. You've got all that excess fabric. Yeah. Anyway, Tom says, yeah. how do you pick the happy medium where the garment's tight enough to sit neatly, but still relaxed enough for a good range of movement? That's a tough question. Yeah. Well, hey, Tom, I would say that it's, um, it's got to do with the fabric. So you have a certain amount of tolerance, but it does depend on how far the fabric then will, will stretch or or not stretch or so it's kind of a combination of what the wearer wants to feel and what yeah. the fabric will how the fabric performs so how do you strike a balance well i think that happens in the fitting i would i would think and then but also when you're planning a garment it's how you want it to look now Stuart says i if it's this kind of a garment i want it fitted i want it on me um, yeah. But if it's this kind of a garment, I want a little bit of, you know, I know when I work, I can't have anything on me. I, I need a lot of tolerance. Okay. You know? And I and I tend to, you know, button the shirt up higher because I don't want it falling back. Yeah. I, and I just don't want to feel anything, any restrictions at all. Um, but then if, you know, if I'm in the gym, then I want things yeah. fitted. Right. So it just depends what the wearer wants and what the fabric will do. Yes. It's that communication then, isn't it? Where mm. you, you go, like you said, with your, your team GB, you're going backwards and forwards. I suppose that's where you would do a toile in the first place and get your, your, your person to wear the toile. And, and that's when you'd go, uh, I'd go, Oh, that's a bit too loose. Can you get rid of some of this ease? And then Tom would go, okay, and start pinning it and, and taking it in. Would, he, would you start pinning it there or whatever garment it is? Is that right? Exactly. And have people move because something looks a certain way on a mannequin or on a hanger. But now we're making a living and breathing garment for a living and breathing person, right? This, yeah. this garment has a job to do. Um, sports, the, the sports um, uh, set of challenges is a perfect example of a uniform that has a job to do. Mm. So it's those two things. I'm trying to think. How fabric, um, uh, sorry, Stuart, but we saw how fabric cooperated 
And then we saw how fabric didn't. Absolutely. I'm just trying to think if I'm <coughs> making myself a shirt. You know, I've got this pattern now. I've made three shirts out of that. Uh, I've been since going to the gym. I now know that that pattern that I've made last year isn't really going to fit me anymore because I'll, 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 there was no ease in it anyway when I made it last year. So mm. I'm going to, it's trial and error now, isn't it? I'm going to, what do I do? Do I recut my pattern out and add a, a centimeter? How do mm. I work that one out to get a, a happy medium? Do I have to make one and see if it works or not, I suppose? Mm -hmm. Or s ask yourself, how has my shape changed? You know, are my biceps thicker? <laughs> Is my back broader, yeah. right? Yeah. Those kinds of questions. And, and it might be that if you have a box pleat in the center back of the, under Which the yoke. Which does, yeah. Okay. That you just increase that, the size of that box pleat. So that all of that under the arm then is, is going to, there's going to be more ease uh, over, over the right. back. Yeah. And you might want to just put a bit more, uh, maybe onto the shoulder, it might just a half centimeter in the bicep yeah has your waist become more defined <laughs> wow, so, thank you, okay. Carol. <laughs> oh, all these things yeah, you know we're talking about the body and what yeah. the body does and how it looks and yeah. what the proportions are and all these things now now we're talking about bespoke absolutely because tailoring. Uh, as tom says there enough for a good range of movement i'll know if i put that shirt on now and i raise my arm up I'm going to have this issue here where there's no room. It'll be so tight that it will pull all this up. So I know I'm going to have to work on that part to get a good range of movement. Yeah, and, and what we call the depth of sigh, which is where the underarm is. Now, this yeah. is a bigger shirt, but if the depth of sigh is too low, you, you can't move. No. If, if that underarm is high enough, look. Yeah. But if it's okay. too low, you're... You, it, you, you can't yeah, and I think that's what I'm going to have to work on. The depth of the underarm is very important. In the knitting world, it's really awkward. And I have to have lots of conversations with my customers because they'll see a pattern and the knitting pattern will say it fits a, uh, a say, a 32 inch chest. But they'll also have on the same pattern lower down. Uh, they'll have the actual finished size. So mm -hmm. even though it's, it, the, the, it's the size that you see in the shops, 32 or 12, 14, 16, but the actual finished size will say 40. And I'll say to my customer, all right, you say you're a 32, but keep looking down here. The actual finished garment of this is 40. That's 30, that's eight inches of ease. And, yeah. and, and I have to yeah. say to them, do um, you want that or do you need to go down a size smaller to counterbalance yeah. that extra slack? Because you may not want that extra slack in there. That's right. And whatever you're measuring, you know, you've got your actual size. So then, then the, the, the wearer can say, OK, this is the actual size. Yes, they go. Yeah. Do I want that? And, and that's what they go. They go, oh, no, I don't want yeah, all that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So now yeah. you can say, oh, OK, so yeah. maybe I want that much. Yes. You know, that. Yeah. so you can take that out. So if you you need something to relate to the, this thing called ease or negative ease, Tom, so yeah. you can use a measuring tape and it's yeah. So it's about the fit yeah. and what the fabric will do. What did you call it again in the in the couture world? You call it tolerance. Tolerance, tolerance that's right. Yeah, yeah. How much fabric you can tolerate? <laughs> yeah. 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 Oh, brilliant! Love it. And our last question uh, from Alison uh, was: um, she just says uh, how to choose and select a stretch fabric. Uh, they've got it wrong before and ended up with fabrics that's too dense. So how do you choose a jersey for a wrap dress compared to stretch that's suitable for dancers' swimwear? Oh, I don't know. How do you do yeah. that? So I would, well, I suppose one thing you could do is you could rely on your supplier, that person behind the counter, yeah. when you go to choose fabric and you can and bring your pattern or your sketch, tell them what the job that 
you know, you want this fabric to do for you, ask for a selection, and then just do some tests, maybe just, you know, put it between your hand, feel it, um, stretch it about, you know, yeah. play with it a little bit and see, but it is, that's going to, until you learn what fabrics are, and let's be fair, new fabrics are coming out all the time. There's, there's such a selection yeah. now. Um, there's a lot of online forums that you can go to, you can ask. You can, look at, you can look in the shops or look online and sometimes they'll give you the fiber content and yeah. the weight of the fabric. So you can, you know, there's a lot of information out there. But I, I can empathize because you've got something in mind. I know it myself. And then you go out, you can't find anything. So then yeah. you make a compromise. You say, oh, this is the closest thing, but it isn't right. Yeah. So, um, yeah, it's a trick. <clears throat> I know it's something that we don't have much of anymore, but you cannot, you cannot, what you get out of a bricks and mortar shop and that conversation with the owner over the fabric and that discussion, you can't beat that. But I know we don't have those shops everywhere, but even if it means traveling 10, 15 miles to go to, or you've heard about a good fabric shop, it's still worth that extra hassle going in feeling it mm. then talking because the host should i mean if you came to my shop when i had, had fabric we would have that discussion um and i'd show it to you and you'd feel it and then I, you'd go oh i'm not too sure about that well how about this one this has got a different stretch or it's it's like this it is it's invaluable that isn't it oh it's so it, it's it is invaluable and sometimes you could call up they'll someone will know if you're earnest or not and you can say look have you got anything can you yeah. send me a sample or can you take a picture yeah. and text it to yeah. me and then you know um you could always ask for 10 a 10 centimeter sample yeah. buy it you know they'll yeah. post it to you and then you know if the shop is too far away yeah um it, lots uh, and i think people do want to help now people do want to sell yeah. they want to stay in business you do yeah and use that expertise so you get that fabric you've got your half a meter you can then sew with it make something do some seams you can put it in the yes. washing machine it comes back to That's that right. preparation again doesn't it? it totally yes absolutely i was going to say you know that's you know this is probably 30 centimeters of fabric yeah get it play with it see what it will do you know master it Absolutely. And enjoy. It's almost like in the knitting world where we have to do a swatch. Uh, I see a pattern and I go, I love that. Ideally, you don't really just want to go and choose some wool and start knitting it yeah. because you might yeah. get halfway through 10 hours worth of knitting and you realize it's too small. You're supposed to do a swatch first. Knit the swatch up, you know, 10 centimeters yes. so you can see the yeah. fabric and wash it so you can see how it ends up because oh, you're going to spend a lot of money on this, aren't you? So, yeah. so enjoy these first preps rather than making them because I know a lot of people go, Oh, I can't be bothered to swatch. And I know it's tedious, but actually, if you try and change that mindset of enjoying these early steps of exploration it makes the process i know it's going to be longer but i think it will be more fulfilling and more rewarding uh, totally and also if you've got something around in your shop which isn't right try that make mm. it out of something wrong make, make it out of something and then you'll learn from that as well you'll say actually i like the properties of this or I'm going to completely stay away from that. So even use what you have around, yeah. you know, Brilliant. make something out of calico so that you know what you want or you don't want. Mm. Absolutely. It's, it's just slowing down that process and, and, and being in the moment more rather than going, I need to quickly make this and boom, 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 and then get halfway through and then get upset. But I know we all battle yeah. with time, don't we? We all, we all want to, <laughs> you know, we've got precious things. We've got, oh, we've got to do that next week and I've got to do that week. So you try and fit your sewing time in into perhaps an afternoon. So it then becomes, again, a battle of time. So you feel yeah. you have to work quicker, uh, which I know can be frustrating. Totally, totally. And the results aren't good. Don't do anything in three hours, people. Just don't do it. <laughs> Well, there we are, Carol. We've got an epic show. It's one hour and 23 minutes. Oh. <laughs> but Always it, good chatting to you. Oh, Always good I, to you. We could, we could talk all evening, couldn't we? Uh, it's been I wonderful. <laughs> uh, let us yeah. know in the comments uh, what you thought and if it was helpful. 
Uh, we'll be back next week. It's holiday week next week. Oh, so I have no idea what they'll be doing. But we've then got, uh, we've lost two sewers. So we've got 10. So we can start to hopefully go into a bit more detail in all their makes, which I always like uh, going through all the rounds uh, as, we, uh, as we lose some sewers, we have a bit more time. So I hope you join us for then. Have you got a busy week ahead of yourself, Carol? Have you got lots of making to do? Just uh, delivered a bridal gown today and tomorrow I have Gran, Mom and the Bride in. <gasps> uh, a three hour fitting. So we're gonna do oh. three three tomorrow and then and then everybody goes off to Mallorca for the wedding in, in two weeks. So oh. this is the kind of the final stages of this. So oh. yeah. Oh it's gonna be good fun. Oh, and lovely how oh it's great. <laughs> How exciting. Loved your company. Uh, thank you very much for tuning in to watch each week. And we'll see you next week for week three holiday week with our special focus. Thanks, everyone. Cheers, all. Bye-bye. Bye, Bye, -bye. Bye everyone.